it's time for another episode of American Reef. Now in today's video, we're going to sync up with an article that's being released over at Reef Builders from Mike Paletta. The topic, Ecosystem Miracle Mike. As many of you know, I've been in love with Miracle Mud for probably the past about five-ish, seven-ish years, something like that. Ever since Brian Tamudi actually introduced me to it. Uh, if you don't remember Brian Tamudi, uh, Brian's the guy where him and his family own Wet Pets and Friends over in McMurray, PA. And uh, he's the one who basically we did some videos on with discus breeding, etc. And for Brian, what happens is for those showroom tanks, he only uses the Miracle Mud filtration system on those tanks. And I end up talking to him about it, test it out, and the rest is kind of history, right? I really like it. And how today's video actually came into being was uh, Mike and I were talking. It was probably late last year. This was before I got hospitalized, actually. Um, and uh, one afternoon, he was doing some maintenance on his tank, and one of the things he was maintaining was actually his Miracle Mud uh, in his sump. And uh, long story made short, dropped the phone down, grabbed some gear, went over to see Mike. And uh, I figured it would be good content, right, and good conversation, at least, for uh, others to hear and listen to as well. So that's the video that we have for today. Now before we go to that video, remember if you're looking for uh, more reef keeping videos, I've got hundreds of them out there. Uh, you can watch them in three ways. Number one, you can do it via the web, via AmericanReef.com, or number two, if you're an Android uh, phone or Android tablet kind of user, you can go out on the Google Play Store and download uh, the Pocket Casts app. Uh, once you download it, search for either American Reef or Saltwater, and the videos will show there. Uh, and lastly, if you're an iTunes, iPad kind of guy, uh, you can just go to iTunes, download the Podcasts app there, and do the same thing. Search for uh, American Reef or Saltwater, and the videos will come there. If you are new to reef keeping and need some reef tutoring, so to speak, check out the Reef Tutor video series available over on AmericanReef.com. And then lastly, if you're looking for what I consider one of the best fresh foods on the planet, that would be American Reef's HBD. You can go to AmericanReef.com. In the bottom center of the page, there's a some verbiage that basically says, hey, you know, purchase your HPD here. Just click on that verbiage and I'll take you to the store where you can actually pick some of that up. Now, with all that being said, let's kind of fire up this video with Mike in the middle of changing some Miracle Mud. One of the things with putting the mud in is I had it basically waterlogged before I go to put it in so that then when I put it in it's pretty easy and straightforward. Okay, basically all I'm doing now is adding mud to the space where I removed it and you can see it puts off a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, dust right off the bat, but that will settle out fairly quickly. It's so funny because right, the videos that I have shown when I do my mud, I'm gentle, I put a lid on the top of it, clearly, and I actually did it with the filter running one time. Nah, yeah, I don't do that, that's insanity. <laughs> Now, is your goal when you're doing this to get a certain thickness? I'm trying to get an inch and a half to two inches of it okay. in that empty space. And it's hard to, to know exactly how much I took out, but right. I took out half two months ago, and now I'm doing the other half. And in taking it out, what I do is I siphon it down into the sewer, so I don't know exactly how much was in there. Right. I mean, originally I had put in close to 40 pounds so this is 15 pounds and I put in 20 pounds the last time and it seems to fill it up so I don't know what happened but I got extra now than I did before <laughs> right. but it's you know kind of weird but it is what it is you know it's still not the easiest thing I do in the tank but it's something I, you have to do 
every couple of years. It's not something I do frequently, but after I do it, I do see a fairly substantial improvement in the health of the corals and stuff. But I will see some cyanobacteria down here, probably. That's a given. Because you're putting a lot more nutrients back into the water. Ah, that makes sense. So, you would expect that. Here, I'm just pouring off the residual gunk from the other bucket. Now, Ling says that's the stuff you want. Yeah, well, <laughs> Ling can, I'll send it back to Ling. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mr. Plata. Now that you're in your comfy kind of, what do you call that, your aqua chair? This, this is my fish room chair. Okay. We're going to talk about something that to this day still has caused more controversy than anything I've ever brought up, and that's the uh, Ling Sai Ecosystem Miracle Mud System, which fortunately or unfortunately, Ling has now had going on for almost 20 years. Right. He experimented for two years before he brought me out to California to see it. And to this day, when I saw that tank, I was still utterly amazed by how beautiful his tank was. Without any kind of skimming, without any kind of water changes, it was had the nicest Red Sea Emperor I've seen still to date. It was just an absolutely incredible tank. It had the first tank that had uh, Montipera Capricornis in it. Every color, including the famous Ling Sai Cap, purples, greens, blues, reds, orange, just, and I had never seen them before, and they were growing and thriving. The fish were bright and colorful. It was just an amazing enclosed ecosystem. Right. So I wrote articles in uh, 1996, 97, 98, 2001. You uh, spoke <laughs> about it all over man. the country. And the number one question was, what's in the mud? To this day, I still don't know. I don't want to know. Right. Two, I got accused of making Ling paying me off to say this. I wish Ling had that kind of money because I could be retired now for <laughs> all the supposed money I made off it. But the thing is, there's still a lot of questions and stuff about it. Even though uh, two years ago Ling ran comparison tanks, he ran tanks that had the exact same water system, exact same water changes, same lighting, put in the same amount of live rock, the same fish, and the same coral fragments. Right. And what he found was, and this is not a quote for me, is the best tank was quote unquote the Paletta method, right. which is the Berlin method with the ecosystem mud filter on it. Right. The other ones he ran was a typical Berlin system with no mud. He ran a total ecosystem, just mud only, with the Calerpa, right. and he ran, ran another one where he ran, only ran the protein skimmer for six hours a day. Now when I say the best system was quote unquote the Paletta system, it was best in terms of having the brightest coloration and the most rapid coral growth. Those are the things we were looking for. The fish were basically all the same. Uh, the amount of algae in the tanks was minimal. He has since actually run another study where, I say study, but it was a comparison of tanks, where he ran a couple of the competitive products versus the Miracle Mud. Right. And basically what he found is in those tanks, they got slightly less coral growth. He only ran them for about nine months, so you're right. not gonna expect to see exponential differences in the growth. But he also found significant less algae in the tank. Hmm. Probably because his system seems to induce or introduce more of the kind of nutrients that you want. Right. So for lack of a, a better explanation, the Paletta system using Miracle Mud has been the best that I've found. I've now been running it or variations of it for approximately the past 18 years. I've always been running Miracle Mud and I've been quite happy with it. So. For a lot of the new hobbies that are getting into the hobby that have never heard of this, they have no idea what the ecosystem is or Miracle Mud is. They're not even that familiar with refugiums. So to start it off, the Miracle Mud system basically uses a refugium, which is a sump below the tank that has some animals, plants, whatever in it. In this instance, it has Miracle Mud in it, and it also has Calerpa. But unlike most systems, the Calerpa is, can be any species pretty much, but the lights are run 24 hours a day. And by doing this, the lights never hit a dark cycle, so they don't ever t start going asexual and start reproducing that way, and they don't produce the yellowing in the water. As you can see, my tank's pretty crystal clear. It's really blue-white rather than yellow. That's because there's no yellowing compounds being given up by the Calerpa. So in that context, it's very good. 
Now the next question is, originally Ling thought, okay, you put the mud in, it's basically good for your life. Ah, uh, that's wrong. Right. Because <laughs> particularly uh, in my right. tanks where I run a lot of animals, right. obviously there's a finite amount of good nutrients within this mud. So you wouldn't expect it to last forever. So what I have found is at about the 18th month mark or so, it's time to change out the mud. So what I do is at the 18 month mark, I take a third or half of the mud out some way. You can either go in with a square box and take it out of the refugium. You can siphon it down the sewer if you want, if you set the tank up smartly, so doing those kind of things is easy, or you can do it as easily as you want. I have little partitions in to mark off the bottom of my sump into thirds. So at the 18 month mark, I take out one third, I let the mud sit for a few days, I pour that water off, I then when I'm doing a water change, put that water that was in the tank on the mud for another couple of days. The water, the mud by then is pretty stable. You're not going to get as much uh, stuff floating around or dissolving out or whatever. I then put that in, I wait another couple of months, I take out the middle third, reintroduce it the same way, and at the end of the another two months I do the third third. Now, oh. So after two years I've replaced all the mud, I then wait another 18 months and do the same thing all over again. So let me add to that. Ling came out with those, I call Miracle Mud bricks, but they're basically trays, right? So you can easily pop them in and out if you don't want to shovel, right? right. So, this is so and for smaller tanks, the stuff that you can hang on the back, you take them out. The thing that you will find in the Miracle Mud systems is all kind of little animals will grow in there, worms, anything you want that gets introduced or that gets washed over your overflow, gets washed into there and starts to reproduce. So once it reproduces, it goes through the whole system and some of it gets blown back into the tank. So in that way, you're always adding some microfauna back within the tank. And that's probably part of the reason why the animals have done so well in this system. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the fish have maintained their coloration. Ling has, has shown that he used to get free, and when I say free, he knows the wholesalers. They gave him free purple tanks from the Red Sea, which nobody gives for free now because they had such bad lateral line disease, no one would buy them. He would introduce them into the Miracle Mud system, and within two or three months, they were completely healed. And I don't mean scarred healed. I mean, you couldn't tell they ever right. had lateral line. Right. The Red Sea uh, uh, Emperor Angel that had in there, he'd gotten the same way. It was starting to deteriorate in, in a friend of his tank. He put it in the tank. To this day, it's still the most beautiful Emperor Angel. It's the reason why an Emperor Angel is called an Emperor Angel, because it was absolutely the most stunning fish. Right. So from that context, I, I believe his system works well doing what he claims it to do. Introduce micronutrients, primarily iron and uh, iodine, mm -hmm. in an organic manner that can be absorbed by the corals and the fish. The fish eat the algae that have these things on it off the rocks. As a result, they get the nutrients that prevent them from getting lateral line disease. That's basically the bottom line. Right. If someone else has a better explanation, I'm more than willing to listen to it. <laughs> but after doing this for 18 years, I'm pretty comfortable that this system works and Obviously, the proof is in the pudding and how my fish look and how my corals look. Very good. So then, uh, as far as the mud, A, you recommend it. B, as far as changing it, you're saying it change it every 18-ish months is when you start changing one-third of it? It's when you change out one-third of it and basically at the two-year mark, I've changed out all of it. Okay. Because I have learned not to do anything really fast all at once. Right. I mean, if you want to be crazy and change it all out at once, you probably could. But I have just learned to, to pace things because I don't see a whole lot of difference in taking yeah. doing this three times versus doing this once. And by doing that, I think it's a more gradual acclimation. I also think that if I take out one third, anything that's living in there will have moved over to the next and vice versa. Yeah. So I'm not going to wipe out all the microfauna if I take it all out at once. Makes sense. That's my own opinion. But yeah, 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 it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, and uh, as far as the poundage recommendation, just go to what Ecosystems or? Go to what Ecosystems recommends. I try to keep it between, somewhere between an inch and a half, two inches. Ling may recommend a little bit less, a little bit more. I haven't really kept up with what his recommendations are. Right. But I've kept it at this level forever. I have the, uh, roughly half of my sump is Miracle Mud. Right. Sump, so. And how big is your sump? It's 90 gallons. 
Okay, so you got a 90 gallon sump. Do you know the, roughly the dimensions of that? Is it like four foot? It's roughly by? four foot by two foot by 20 inches. Okay, so then you're saying basically your 24 by 20 inches of that is one and a half inches of miracle mud. Yeah, and that, that was about between 30 and 40 pounds. Okay, and do you get any of the benefits of kind of the remote deep sand bed as far as, you know, the denitrification, even though it's not? I, I have to assume more from the Calerpa taking nitrates out rather than from the mud actually doing it. Yep. Although a lot of the detritus that gets washed over the airflow settles there and gets consumed by the organisms that live there. Right. But in terms of denitrification, I don't do anything to remove nitrate in this tank, and my nitrate generally runs between 4 and 8, 5 and 10. There you go. So not... Really, right. I don't. I'm trying. I'm not trying for absolute zero. Right. But I want to have sort of a, a, a moderate, stable, low level. Right. So this allows me to do that without having to do other things that may bring it way low, or if you take it offline, makes it go high. So this, as I said, one of my goals is for everything to be pretty stable. Okay. So then again, this is just more of an update. In other words, hey, we sh we did show you on originally when we were talking about it, and this is more on. Hey, when to change it out? Or right, because I've been getting I got a lot of questions about this at Macna. Sure. So that's what I'm doing. Very good. So I guess to that point, anything else to add before we take off? Uh, that's about it. Good deal. As always, thank you, Mr. Pilata. Thank you, Russ. <laughs>